welcome to imagination number nine out in our toolbox directly related to abstraction and mental modeling so imagination and imagination skills much of our cognitive tools and toolbox are built around this idea of imagination and imagination skills. Unfortunately, imagination is not valued in our culture, apart from the arts. By the time most students reach year seven, imagination is well and truly on the back burner. And in my PhD, I did a lot of research into this and I have the research that demonstrates that this is the case. So as an example, go into any library if you don't believe me. You'll see the two big categories that a library is set up in, any library. It's set up into fiction, the stuff of imagination, that is to entertain, but it's not factual, and non-fiction, the non-imagination stuff all the real, factual, useful stuff. This is a lie brought about by John Dewey. Much of the education system in the world, and in Australia in particular, is built on the thinking of John Dewey. But unfortunately, this is a poor approach. This division is a false separation that makes us think that imagination and imagination skills are not part of the engineering world. Nothing could be further from the truth, and it's tripping up most of our electrical students. You need strong imagination skills if you're going to build mental models that are going to help us in dealing with the abstract nature of electricity. So imagination goes well beyond art. And during my PhD studies, I developed 10 imagination skills categories. And here they are just above. Problem solving, spatial, psychomotor, visual skills, mental modeling skills, abstraction skills, storytelling skills, history, gaming, and metaphysics. Many of these skills cross over into my cognitive skills toolbox and in some places they cross over with each other for example spatial and psychomotor skills also are very closely related my point here is that imagination is the key underpinning skill of all the skills required to make appropriate mental models that will let us cope with the complexity of electrical physics created by this abstractive, non-sensory nature of electricity. So what can we do? Well, I think there are three basic steps. Step one is to value imagination and recognize as humans, it is the very thing that gives us the ability to form and have language to cope with multiple levels of complexity and abstraction. Then start to tune and train your imagination to help us construct, challenge, reconstruct our mental models so that we can understand and manage our physics of electricity. Step two is that by using and practicing the cognitive tools in this particular toolbox, my cognitive tool toolbox, you are actively developing your imagination in and of itself. It is a tool that you can improve to improve the use of the other tools. It's like the file in your toolbox. It's a tool that's used to sharpen other tools. So that's what imagination and practicing imagination skills will help you fine tune and use other tools. Step three. You can practice imagination skills in everyday things of life. So let's look at a few examples where you can do that. So the first one is going to the movies. At the end of the movie, sit down and ask yourself and the others, what did the movie teach me? 
all stories have a reason and a purpose. The way the story is told, the things that are in the story. In movies, nothing happens by accident. Everything, placement of products, the way the characters interact, everything is placed in a movie for a very specific purpose. So see if you can sit down and nut out what did the movie teach me? What was the internal story about? Number two, in electrical work, always make a drawing or a sketch. It pays to redraw diagrams from a textbook into your notes. You need the medium of sketching a lot, a huge amount. And I'll reiterate it again. Always make drawings and sketches of the circuits and the things you're doing in electrotechnology. It helps clarify and build your internal mental models. As I say to my students over and over and over again, I'm very, very good at electrotechnology, but I always draw the circuit because it helps clarify and explain not only to others, but to myself what is going on in a particular circuit. Three, play games with your friends. One of my favourites is playing Pictionary. Pictionary is one of those great games that helps you develop mental models and asks you to draw them down to represent that picture that you're trying to communicate to somebody else. Other games like Risk is a great game. It's kind of a war game and you, as the name implies, you've got to take risks and you've got to take calculated risks and uh, try and conquer the abstract world inside Risk. Four, problem solve every day in hundreds of ways. You do that all day, every day, you're problem solving. You get up in the morning, what am I going to have to breakfast? That is a problem that needs to be solved. When you find a problem you are struggling with, stop and think about the actual process. You will be amazed that if you've got a problem, sit down and think about, see if you can unpack the stages of the problem. Where am I now? Where do I need to get to? And what are some of the processes in between that will actually help me solve the problem? So thinking about problem solving actually helps you with problem solving. And fifth, if you're already an artistic person, then think about how you could use those skills in your learning to improve your mental models. If not, then have a go at some graphic art, some drawing, general drawing. It's very easy. I'm, I draw stick figures. I'm not the most wonderful artist. I can do technical drawing quite well, but I do enjoy doing a little bit of sketching and drawing. It helps your general eye-hand coordination, those kinds of things. So if you're already artistic, See if you can recontextualize those skills. If you haven't got them like me, it doesn't hurt to practice them. They will help. So what are the take-homes? How can, how can we go about amplifying your imagination? Everyone's got one. It is what makes you human. So how can we amplify that skill? So the first thing we can do is we can fight the culture that doesn't value imagination. Be countercultural. Understand that your culture will think you are strange for wanting to use imagination to learn about electrical physics. But actually, it's very, very good way to approach electrical physics. Next, build your cognitive toolbox and fill it with tools built on those imagination skills, those 10 categories that I just spoke about. So as you build each of the cognitive tools in the toolbox, you will be building imagination skills. Third, it will take time and effort, but a little effort now will save you a lot of time in the future. It's not magic. It is real cognitive science. I've demonstrated it over and over and over with hundreds and hundreds of students. But once you've taken on board imagination, it will feel like magic.
because all of a sudden this world of electrical physics will open up to you and suddenly you'll be able to cope with the multiple layers, the complexities, everything that's happening in electrical physics. So continue to build your cognitive tools and get them tucked away into your toolbox and drag them out when you need to deal with particular aspects of electrical physics.